question is from Philly Fan 1728. I see the West Side barbell guys doing heavy box squats. Is there a benefit to this compared to traditional squats? If so, what and why would you incorporate it into a program? I love box squats. Box yeah. squats. Uh, box squats were one of the one of the ways I got my squat up to the, the, the only time, the first time I ever did, and the only times I did I did over four hundred pound squat. It was the box squat that took me to the next level. Mm -hmm. Now, what I what I take from the box squat. So to do a proper box squat, by the way, is you get under bar like you're going to do a squat. You take a low box. Actually, you can use different different heights, but I would pick a box that would have me at the bottom of my normal right, squat. Your end range squat. My end range. And I would slowly lower myself down. I'd sit, and I'd stay tight. I wouldn't bounce off the squat. I've seen mm -hmm. people do this on a box where they yeah, they'd or, use it as a as like a tap or whatever. Or they rock back. Or they rock yeah. back. I would sit down on the box, stay tight. I'd wait about two seconds and then I'd stand up. And what I took from that was my the strength at the bottom of my squat got so much better. Oh yeah. It made me way stronger at the weakest part of my squat. And I think it's because when you're at the bottom and you sit there for you're a second, you're at a dead stop. You're at a dead stop. Yeah. You're and you're 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 getting rid of a little bit of that uh, that that elastic rebound that you get from the bottom of an exercise. So would, you have to lift from almost a dead you know position. I would make the argument that uh, it's similar benefits as pause squats. Mm. Uh, it, you know, it's you're taking momentum out, right? Yeah. That's and, and I think that with 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 squatting and and less so with deadlifting, but with squatting, especially, you get that major rebound effect of bouncing off the back of your calves and the 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 release and they pop back up. Whereas if you stop and you pause for two or three seconds and then come back up, I mean that's very similar to the, the the box squat feel where you're sitting you're completely stopped and they come out you know you uh, you could also you instead of using the box too you could also use like a the the rack and come to the bottom of, of the until the weights hit the rack and then you're at the bottom and then come from a dead a dead yeah. stop like you that. can but the box is a little different because when you sit on it even though you're staying tight in your core your muscles do relax far more than if you're supporting it at all right right and so you kind of sit down pause for a second come up and the, the, the carryover, the reason why the guys from the West Side Barbell did it was because of the carryover. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you got stuck in your regular squats, you start doing some box squats, all of a sudden your regular squats start to go through. Now, the yeah, you're training the recruitment process. You're enhancing that pro in, in the most vulnerable part of the exercise, right? The one where you're down at the bottom of your squat. Typically, you're not going to produce the most, fo the most force in that position. And so to then, you know fixate on that part of the exercise where you know typically you don't have that much force production now let's let's train that to to really like hone in and focus on generating more force with that it's going to benefit you tremendously mm -hmm. now we're making the case for how how great they can be i'm going to make the case for the other side too that it's it's not the most valuable thing for the average person uh, I think more people would benefit from working on their their squat depth and getting better range of motion than loading the bar heavier and shortening the range of motion up and going heavy. As far as the carryover it has for strength and building a squat up, incredible. So I think it's an incredible tool like many other tools, and that's the reason why Westside Barbell uses it and does it. But for the average client, um, I, I, I had more people that – were stuck at not being able to get a squat to 90 or beyond 90. And so putting a box underneath them where they don't even hit 90 degrees or barely do hit 90 degrees. Um, I, and loading, and normally what people do with box squats too is they load it heavy, really heavy. I don't see a lot of value in that for the average person. I use box squats more for the average person to actually treat, to teach form. Yes. I was just going to say, I was going to give you some pushback because I loved box squats for the average person. For, for, for form, really, yes. like to teach them how to sit. Like it was a great way to teach someone how to sit back. Like if you get a yes. client, the, and trainers will understand this that are listening, um, you know, sometimes uh, cueing, hinging at the hips is like, what the fuck does that mean to mm -hmm. Susie who's, you know, 65 and is never fucking, mm -hmm. doesn't know what that means, right? But telling them, sit back on the box. And because the box will catch them, right. they're not afraid to sit Exa back. Exactly. So they, they get more comfortable with the, the movement pattern of sliding the hips back and sitting down into a seat or a chair. So that's how I used a box right there, which is not how Westside Barbell. Westside Barbell is using it for the, the what we talked about at the right. beginning, which is building strength, tons of value for it. I think it's amazing for those reasons. But when, when, I, when I think back to the average person that I train, which is I think the majority of people probably listening to this podcast, 
I'm not really using box squats that often unless it's somebody who's like really new. I'm teaching mm -hmm. how to hinge back. But if it's like the average person who's been weightlifting for a couple of years, it's just not a tool that I use that often. It's for so the first time when I started doing box squats with other people, it was this is when I started to understand priming. This is box squats actually are what led me to really start to understand the the difference between priming and warming up because I noticed when I'd have my regular clients do box squats before they squatted, their squats look better. Mm -hmm. And it was because of exactly what you're saying. It taught them, it got them in the right recruitment pattern and feel. In fact, MAPS Anabolic box squats are put in there before traditional squats specifically for that reason. This is before, you yeah. know, ever ever talked about or created a program like MAPS Prime. Well, and I too, I think that it teaches uh, supportive muscular tension uh, that is necessary, you know, in that position because a lot of my clients would go through the, you know, the movement of it, but then they would bounce back up off the joints. And so uh, you would, you would see, you would see them actually relax, you know, down at the bottom position, yeah. uh, which would, was very common because you could sort of utilize that, that elastic spring effect. And then, you know, and that's something we're trying to, to teach against because, you know, the, the more you load now, like it's going to compromise the joints, you know, down the road. So I'd looked at it as a great way to then, you know, teach so now I'm at this bottom position. I have no momentum to spring up off of. How do I get up? You have to, you know, really utilize your central nervous system, you know, recruit you and tight. squeeze. You got to be tight. Mm -hmm. Your muscles have to be really involved that way.